All right, my name is Austin George. I've been in recruitment for just over 10 years now. I currently work as a talent partner and sourcing specialist at Health First. Um, I absolutely love what I do. The reason why I'm in recruitment is I just, I love helping people. And today I'm gonna talk about specialize or getting left behind. I've been through, gosh, a lot in my recruitment career. And um, some unfortunate things have happened such as layoffs. Uh, I'll talk about kind of how to navigate that, but mainly just all about promotion, specializing, standing out, and just excelling within the world of recruitment. First off, I'm going to talk about the power of specialization. So recruitment is more competitive than ever. Right now, we live in an economy that um, is witnessing some challenges. Let's just say that. Uh, the world of recruitment has drastic layoffs. Uh, I live right here on the Space Coast. It's the East Coast of Florida. Um, we're witnessing huge layoffs, even in uh, some of the best industries, military and defense. So if those companies are laying people off, some of the best recruiters I've ever seen in my network, um, no, no one's safe, I, I will say, but I'm going to teach some things that you could possibly do to stand out, get promoted, and hopefully avoid some layoffs. Generalists, they blend in. Specialists stand out. I'm a sports guy. I love sports. So basketball, football, those are my main. Um, if you're a quarterback and you just do the same as every other quarterback, or if you're like a Dak Prescott or Patrick Mahomes, and you're able to use your legs and, and your arm talent, hey, then you're specializing and you're standing out and you're amongst the best of the best, right? Uh, same thing in recruitment. So if you're a generalist, if you're just like everybody around you, everybody on your team, and you don't find ways to specialize, guess what? You're not, you're not super special. I hate to break your bubble. Um, third thing here, specializing helps you become indispensable in your organization. Kind of touched on it a little earlier, but um, you want to become indispensable. You want to become that person that's the go-to market specialist, the consultant within your company, or if you specialize in AI, technology, uh, data. Um, you could also specialize in sourcing. I'll get into all of that. Industry focus. Be that go-to expert. I'm a scuba diver. That's kind of part of my passion. I scuba dive with my father. I actually uh, spearfish. I've developed a recruitment method called spearfish recruitment. I'll dive into that maybe on another conference one day. But um, you want to deep dive in your industry. So one of the first industries I started out in is actually insurance. When I dove into insurance, I knew nothing about it. I knew that, hey, you get health insurance with a company and you're good to go. I didn't know anything about life insurance or, or any of the other insurances out there. But when I started out in the industry, I quickly realized I'm either going to succeed at this or I'm going to drastically fail. And it's a really hard industry to start out in. What I did is I became a go-to market expert. Any of my clients that I had or gained, they would often come to me and I would often know more about the market, not just the candidates, but the insurance industry market that they were in more than they knew. And I quickly realized that's extremely valuable for my clients. Same thing if you're an internal recruiter, if you don't work for a staffing agency. If someone comes up to you and you work for a certification and inspection company and your client is looking for candidates within the elevator inspection industry, you want to know that industry more than they know it. And it's because it provides drastic value for your company and you could back what you know with the numbers and be data driven. Second point here is build a network of industry professionals who trust your expertise. I can't stress this enough how important it is. I just started on this journey of building my network and I'm at nearly 10,000 following within my network. So it's not chump change, but it's not the best of the best either. And I make that a priority throughout my week. I'll get into this a little later. Um, something you could specialize in is like organization. And um, you could also specialize in time blocking. But part of my time blocking that I do each and every week is building my network um, of industry professionals. And it's super important within your LinkedIn. That's a form of um, a, a tool, really, that you could use to 
outreach, but also connect with other individuals in your industry. Third point here, gain a reputation as a go-to recruiter for specific roles. So right now I'm a talent partner, strategic sourcing specialist for Health First. It's Florida's best healthcare company. I actually think, shout out to them, I think it's the best healthcare company in the US. But oftentimes recruiters will go to me for certain roles that I haven't even recruited on for longer than six months, but it's because I've gained that reputation in our company um, of being that go-to expert. So I deep dive that role. I deep dive everything about that industry and I become an expert in that. And it's super important. Next thing, I just mentioned it. It's extremely important. Something you could specialize in. Time management and organization. I'd be curious to see how many people in this chat here um, are... Uh, all over the place, such as myself, when you work. If you have a million tasks out there, um, your managers just keep piling on more and more roles. I think the most amount of roles I've ever had is uh, just over 65 roles at once. In order to successfully do your job to the best of your ability, you got to have some organization or time management skills. So I think if you specialize in this and you become a go-to expert within this small niche, in recruitment, your other recruiters will also thank you because they're going to be learning some things from you. So I start this with the first bullet point. Specializing in efficiency allows you to manage more candidates effectively. It's totally true. We get thousands of candidates that apply each week within our industry. We have oftentimes over way over 300 roles open every single week. And it's divided up amongst a mighty team of recruiters. And I build all the pipelines for them. If I don't specialize in efficiency, I'm going to get left behind and I'll get let go right away. So what I do is a couple tools I'm going to share with you. One is this little picture that I have here posted. It's called Time Blocking. Time Blocking 101. Class is now in session. I learned this from a top 100 recruitment global professional and his name is actually Trent Cotton. I'm going to shout him out. Extremely blessed, extremely fortunate to have him as a mentor. He taught me so many things, one of which is time blocking. So this lady here posted um, as a photo. What she's doing is she's organizing her tasks in individual time blocks. So that could be anywhere from if you're kind of crazy and you have a million tasks, you could do it 15, 15 minutes time blocks. You could do 30 or an hour. Typically, most people do 30 minute or an hour increments. I recommend doing a small little buffer period just in case. So what I do throughout my week is I pick certain days that I'm going to build pipelines for our company. I try to input hundreds of people into our pipeline each and every week. And this is how it's allowed me to do just over a million candidates put into the system in less than a year. And it allows me to be very efficient. So what I do is I do typically Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays for time blocking for sourcing. So I'll do two or three hour increments of just sourcing. I turn on my do not disturb on my mail because I get so many outreaches on my email. Same thing on LinkedIn. I, I put the, the sound on mute. I can't reply to messages. And I just go into it time blocking. And you're just very exact about your your task and you don't delegate anything else you just deep dive that one task and it's extremely efficient and then from there i have like another 30 minute time block of interviewing um so you know you, you just kind of play with your task and you delegate it appropriately um and you can even get into it like i i color coordinate i'm, I'm a pretty big nerd on this and very passionate about it it's how i could get so much done in my week I even add personal stuff on the calendar. Some people say don't, but um, if you work for a flexible organization where they allow you to take a 30-minute lunch or an hour, um, or they don't necessarily care where you start in the day, if you start at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 9 a.m., I add my personal time block on there. So hopefully my coworkers know not to hit me up during those hours. Um, it, again, it just depends on your organization and what your manager allows. Next one here is open new doors. 
there's a couple of things that you can do here. You got to expand your mind, but speaking multiple languages opens up opportunities to recruit internationally. This is a huge thing. Am I good at this? Heck no. I worked for a nearshore company last year um, and even greater part of this year as well. And one of my main tasks was just communicating with the recruitment team, building everything that I can for them to make their jobs easier as well. And um, most of them were from Costa Rica, Colombia, Brazil, Bogota, amazing company. They're called Hatchworks AI, shout them out. But um, I, I do not speak great Spanish, so I'm not kind of using the exact skills that I'm talking about here, but I did try. I tried to dive in a little bit um, and try to communicate and build that culture with my coworkers. But I saw firsthand if I was bilingual, I'd be able to communicate not just with my coworkers, but our clients and companies that uh, worked throughout those areas. So I think it's extremely important and it's a way to specialize, you know, specialize in a new language. That could be a huge key to success for your current company and other companies down the line. Another area that you could open up new doors is by building connections with diverse talent pools. I got to see this firsthand at a couple companies that I've recruited with because if you limit yourself to just one talent pool and you don't dabble in the diverse talent pools, you're missing out on a good chunk of the population for your roles that you're recruiting for. I know for myself, I've recruited for staffing agencies where our clients are international. That right there is a diverse talent pool. It's extremely important to kind of dive into that. Um, another one that I have here is gaining certifications. Gaining certifications is super important. I'm working on my project management license. It's it's something that's you know extremely hard to obtain, but at the same time, it'll be incredibly worth it for your career. So you could specialize with that and put that in your headline as you recruit and work within recruitment because it holds weight within the industry. Another one here is social media and personal branding. You want to amplify your company's brand but also promote your personal one via social media. Remember, what other, whatever company you're a part of, they should allow you to be able to promote your personal brand and build that personal brand. If you don't have one, figure it out. Um, you see here on mine, I have strategic sourcing specialist. That's my title. Company name is Health First. And I have down candidate experience. That's part of my personal brand. I post on it all the time about candidate experience. I do it in every single post. And I also have here in my little headline up above, which I recommend you taking advantage of, is a recruitment system is only as good as the pipeline that they have built. And that's extremely important for my role as a sourcing specialist. You need to be able to promote something that you bring to the table that's different from others. It could also help boost the marketing for your company, um, the touch points that they get because of your work that you do with your personal brand and your social media. It'll help a, attract top talent as well. One of my last points here is AI and technology. You need to leverage AI to automate sourcing and screening tasks. It's a must. And we could dive into this another time or you could reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. I love to help out uh, everybody here on this platform, um, but AI and technology is not just the next new thing, but it's currently used amongst the top recruitment professionals in the world today, not just in the US, but globally. I use AI for everything. It's my personal assistant. I, I use it to help create numerous templates for our company. I use it to import hundreds of thousands of data in a matter of hours instead of weeks. Um, it allows me to stay ahead of the recruitment trends by using some cutting edge technology. You could also create custom GPTs to do um, things such as candidate write-ups as well. One of my last points here is candidate experience, the human touch. I specialize in this because I really care about it. Um, I believe every company should care about this. Some of them say they do, but they don't actually put practices into motion. And you can be that recruitment leader within your company, whether you're a TA director or you're a recruiter. But if you specialize in this and um, you 
you actually care about the candidate experience, there's numerous things you can do, but you could pay attention to the data, the retention rate within your company. You could pay attention to the processes and make improvements. And every single call, if you do your job right and you provide timely feedback to those candidates and those managers and move the process along, you're caring about the candidate experience. And that in itself will allow you to uh, diversify yourself within the recruitment world. Data analysis. Uh, I'm a big data nerd. I'm one of the biggest data nerds within recruitment. I could say that very confidently. As I mentioned at the top of the call, uh, an hour, um, over a million candidates added into pipelines within our company in less than a year. And this is because I'm a data nerd. I use the data to back my work. And it's extremely important. If you don't do that, you're not providing enough value to the company. The company doesn't know how good you truly are doing. Keep track of how many hires you're doing. Keep track of the time uh, it takes from screening a candidate to submitting to the hiring manager to the offer. Keep track of that feedback loop as well. Present actionable metrics to the leadership to position yourself as not only a strategist, but a market consultant. Know that data inside and out to let that back up your performance. And the proof is in the numbers. Because if you're doing extremely well and the data proves it, hey, you could leverage that for a promotion or a race within your company. You could also leverage that to show that you're one of the best recruiters at what you do. Embrace specialization. That's the main point of my whole call today, or my whole uh, presentation today. Choose an area to specialize in and dive deep. You could do multiple areas as well. Becoming an expert ensures long-term career success. You need to stay flexible, continue learning to maintain your competitive edge. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for staying with me with the eras of the hurricane. I thank you very much for your time and shout out to Dan and Hire Easy because they are the best platform. Um, part of how I've been able to source a million candidates in less than a year and also with all my other companies that I've worked for, um, they've been a front front runner of that and I can't thank them enough for their technology and uh, for their time today. Thank you.